Welcome back. Now, the first assumption, again, has three parts. The regression is linear, the model is linear, and the coefficients correctly specified and has an additive error term. And so the first part says that OLS, the, the OLS can only be used or can only be uh, give you the best unbiased coefficients if the model is linear in the coefficients. So what does that mean? Well, in this equation, let's just look at this first equation here, there are four entities. There's the dependent variable y, there's the y-intercepts, this is a coefficient, there's this slope coefficient b1, and this other slope coefficient b2. So this would be with two explanatory variables, there are two slopes and a y-intercept. And so the x1 and x2 explanatory variables are called uh, ex the you know just the variables of the explanatory variables, and then here the last part we have the stochastic error term. So if this is what our model looks like, this is linear in the coefficients because the b0, b1, and b2 enter linearly, which means think about the equation of a line. In an equation for a line, all there are is addition and subtraction and multiplication, right? So you can have this y-intercept added in. This y-intercept is multiplied times this variable. This one is mul added and multiplied times this variable. And so the coefficients are raised to the first power. There's no function applied to the coefficient itself. It's just there. It's a number like three. Now, the only way I think to understand what nonlinear in the coefficients means is to look at some other examples and see which are or are not linear in the coefficients. Let's look at this second equation. So this first one, this is this is uh, the typical linear in the coefficients model, but there are some other options also that that can be good. So. Um, the second equation, y equals a y-intercept, a slope times x, a slope times another x. But then look, we have another slope here, b3, times the variable, the second explanatory variable, squared. So this might be horsepower x2 and horsepower squared, x2 squared. Is this linear in the coefficients? Yes, it is. Now, why is it linear in the coefficients? The reason is the slopes and the y-intercepts themselves are just by themselves. b0, b1, b2, and b3, those are linear. There's a squared term, which would be nonlinear, but it's the variable that's squared. It is not the coefficient that's squared. So this first equation is linear in the coefficients and linear in the variables. The second equation is linear in the coefficients, but nonlinear in this variable because it enters squared. It allows it to curve as we saw in lecture two. Now let's look at this third equation. Is it linear in the coefficients? I see a y. I see a uh, y-intercept. I see a natural log of a variable. I see one over a variable. And I see 10 raised to another explanatory variable. Is this linear in the coefficients? Yes, it is also. Why? Because we haven't done anything fancy to the slope coefficients themselves. You can picture this if you want to put data into a model. You can do all these things to the data before you put them in the model. You can take the natural log of a variable like we did in lecture two. Uh, you could also take one over the inverse, one over a variable, and then put it into your regression model. That's fine. Or you could raise 10 to the power. There, there are all kinds of things you could do the variable itself and then put it into a regression, and that's all fine. It's all allowed. Um, what about this equation? The natural log of y. Well, we did this in equation, sorry, in lecture two on modeling curves, and this is also linear in the variable, sorry, linear in the coefficients. The dependent variable is nonlinear, but that's fine the coefficients are linear. So 
what does nonlinear in the coefficients look like? Uh, so this is next one here. This is nonlinear in the coefficients. The y-intercept term, that's fine. But then look this look at this uh, first slope. It's not multiplied times x1, it's uh, e to the slope times x1. Well, that violates this assumption. You can't get slopes that are in this form from ordinary least squares. Now, there are some methods where you can do it, but ordinary least squares isn't one that you want to try that with. Uh, also, look at this uh, second term, second slope. It's not just multiplied times this uh, second variable. It's raised to the third power and then multiplied to uh, times the second explanatory variable. So you can't really do that either. I know some of you are going to say, yes, you can. Okay, there, there are ways to, to do that one, but not the e to the, to the b1. Now, another possibility, um, this is also a no. This is not linear in the coefficients because the slopes are, you take the explanatory variable and raise it to the power of the slope that you want to know. Same thing here. Now, this equation, this is a famous type of equation that is named after a couple of economists called the Cobb-Douglas equation. And the Cobb-Douglas equation is very common in economics because uh, it's very good at explaining the relationship between, um, say, consumption and utility or um, production and how much of certain inputs are used. But you can't simply get these uh, slopes, b, beta 1 and beta 2, from that Cobb-Douglas function. However, there's a way around it. You can take the natural log of the whole equation, and when you do, it looks like this next equation. Natural log of the left-hand side equals. Now, this second part, this would actually be the uh, natural log of that y-intercept, which is fine. The uh, b1 comes down and is multiplied times the natural log of the first variable. So you can take some types of equations that are nonlinear in the coefficients and convert it into one that is linear in the coefficients. And this one is perfectly acceptable and is linear in the coefficients. So that's the first part of the first assumption. Kind of long-winded, isn't it? Now, these other two... To, to wrap up, what's the second part? We assume that the uh, uh, regression model is correctly specified. And that actually has two parts. Um, correct specification means two main things. Number one, it means that you have the correct functional form. That you're not trying to model a line with a curve, and you're not trying to use a curve, you know, the wrong curve. And if uh, it's a curve that involves a cubic term, you have the cubic term in there. And secondly, you also have the correct set of variables uh, in your model. So if you need to explain income with, uh, say, education, experience, region of the country, etc., that you have the correct set of variables in there and you haven't put in a variable that should not be in the equation, and you have not left out a variable. That's more important. You haven't left out a variable that should be in the equation. So that's what correctly specified means, the right functional form and the right set of variables. Now the third part says we assume that the equation has an additive error term. What's an additive error term mean? Well, it means that what we do is we predict the value of a uh, for a particular individual and then we know that that individual won't be exactly equal to the value we predict. There's a residual of course if we, as we've uh, discussed but it says that, that residual is added to the variable uh, sorry added to the prediction so for example here this is an equation we saw before miles per gallon equals 32 minus 0.06 times horsepower plus 1 so if we plug in 100 horsepower for that, we get that our prediction equals 32 minus 
60 plus one if if it's a domestic car and our so our prediction for such a car would be um, 29 miles per gallon then after we have this prediction we're going to go to a random number generator we might roll a die and it gives us a random number between one and six and that's our residual and then we flip a coin to see if the residual is positive or negative and so suppose we roll a three in our random number generator and we flip a coin and it says subtract three that's how our residual affects our prediction but in some models the residual shouldn't be added it should be multiplied and I see I'm out of time here we might roll a two and that would say multiply the prediction by two